So we've all heard about bird flu by now, or H5N1 if you're getting technical. It's highly infectious and making headlines again, because now it's in cows. So the fact that it is in cattle now is a, uh, you know, definitely raises our concern level. The influenza viruses in particular are very good at mutating. If it is going cow to cow, or um, easily spreading around a farm, then we've got a real problem on our hands. So why are scientists and public health officials on edge? And does the fact that it's now in cows mean there's more of a risk for people? We should start by saying there are a lot of unknowns right now with this virus, especially when it comes to how exactly it could impact humans. But We'll try and lay out what we do know so far by starting with the basics. H5N1 spreads primarily between birds, both wild and farmed. The virus grows in their digestive system, and it gets passed to other birds if they come in contact with the infected saliva, mucus, or feces. Now, it's really contagious, and it's affected birds all over the world. And a couple of years ago, it led to one of the worst global outbreaks in history which to this day still hasn't been contained. Across Canada, the virus has hit an estimated 5 million birds. When it goes into a barn, you know, within four days, we can see total mortality of all the animals. According to the CDC, more than 80 million birds have died in the U.S. since 2022. Eagles, geese, ducks, owls. It even recently made its way to penguins in Antarctica, partly because the virus is so transmissible, but also because it's practically impossible to contain. The migration patterns of wild birds I mean the virus is constantly on the move around the world. There's been a couple of new varieties of it that have been going around the world and infecting uh, birds worldwide and in ways that have just we've never seen before. Now, the virus has passed other animals before. Seals, bears, foxes, even domestic animals, cats and dogs. It spreads when those animals eat or come in contact with infected birds. Last summer, the World Health Organization warned about an alarming rise in mammalian cases. Avian flu, as it's more formally known, has been spreading among more animal species over the last four years in a handful of countries. Over 200,000 seals and sea lions have died in South America alone. But this latest spread is believed to be a first. Scientists have identified the mysterious illness affecting Texas dairy cows as bird flu. It's not entirely clear how the virus passed to cattle. They weren't known to be susceptible before now. Experts think that maybe the cow's water could have been contaminated by feces or saliva from infected birds. The whole idea of influenza from a bird being found in a cow is really a new concept and we're just not used to thinking about cattle and livestock being the group at risk for avian influenza. The good news is it seems to be affecting cows differently than birds. The symptoms have actually been pretty mild and so far they aren't dying from the disease. At this point in time there will be no call for any kind of a quarantines or any kind of a depopulation in, in our ruminant and our cattle populations. But it's spreading fast. Already, more than a dozen herds in several states have been affected, and more are being tested. We're really trying to understand why so many cow herds have been found to have influenza in, the, in a very short period of time. And if it's confirmed, as suspected, that it's now spreading from cow to cow and not just bird to cow, well, that's where things get risky. One of the top questions for a lot of people right now is about milk. Because yes, H5N1 has been detected in raw milk in some US states. It's unclear how dangerous it would be if you actually drank that milk, but public health experts say as long as you're buying pasteurized dairy products, there should be no issue. The pasteurization process does uh, inactivate the virus. We know that, so we shouldn't be, as a baseline, people shouldn't be drinking unpasteurized milk because of other potential infectious diseases that they could catch from unpasteurized milk. This is just one more reason not to drink unpasteurized milk. The most obvious risk to humans right now is direct exposure. As soon as I heard that it was crossing into cows, um, into dairy cows, it's like, oh boy, that's, that's my industry and I know there's going to be uh, some fallout. U.S. officials have now confirmed the first suspected case of cow to human transmission in Texas. According to the CDC, the patient's only reported symptom was conjunctivitis, so pink eye, basically. 
He's been treated with an antiviral drug and was told to isolate. And in the other confirmed U.S. case, which went from chicken to human, fatigue was the main symptom. But there have been reports of much more serious illness in other countries, especially among young people. And according to Health Canada, of the human cases of H5N1 reported to date, the case fatality rate is 52%. But they say this could be skewed, considering how small the sample size is and how many of these cases were detected because of a patient's hospitalization. The fatality rate uh, that's been reported in previous human outbreaks of H5N1 is extremely concerning. It's possible that there are some sort of slight biases in that that are that cause overestimation. But what is definitely fair to say and important to emphasize is that this is way, way higher than what we experienced with COVID-19. It, it's not even in the same ballpark. So far, all of these human infections have been isolated incidents through direct exposure to sick animals, meaning the risk of humans actually spreading H5N1 to each other is extremely low as of now. But if it's spreading cow to cow, human to human isn't out of the question. Cows, mammals, um, being a reservoir gives this virus new opportunity to change. And that's what we're watching for really closely. Has this virus changed or is it changing that would make it more likely to spread from human to human. Right now, humans have to be exposed to a substantial viral load to become infected with H5N1. We're talking about direct contact with multiple really sick animals. And when it does infect someone, it tends to live in the lower respiratory tract, in the lungs, rather than the upper respiratory tract, which causes things like coughing and sneezing and helps other viruses like H1N1 spread so easily from person to person. According to the CDC, the ability to attack the upper respiratory system is one of the missing pieces this virus needs to pose a real threat to humans. And the concern is the more mammal to mammal transmission there is, the more opportunities there are for H5N1 to mutate. So it could do things like infect the upper respiratory tract. The Infection of the lower respiratory tract is disproportionately what leads to severe infections. It's, it's what leads to like complicated viral pneumonias. However, viruses that infect the lower lungs don't transmit very well. But it is relatively simple for the virus to sort of tune itself or mutate so that it's capable of recognizing the types of sugars in our upper respiratory tract. And when it does that, its ability to transmit typically uh, increases substantially. And that's the worst case scenario for an infection like this. After that recent human infection in Texas, scientists took a sample from the patient and sequenced the virus. So far, it doesn't look like it's mutated in a way that would make it more dangerous to humans. Also, unlike something like COVID, which was a completely novel virus, scientists have been studying H5N1 since the 90s. But what we know so far from the sequence is that this um, virus is one that we can still, that test for, so our tests work, um, our antivirals work against this virus, and then also we have some candidate vaccine viruses that um, we know will also um, cover this virus as well. While there are still a lot of unknowns about this new development, the risk of infection right now is extremely low. And you can bet that public health officials all over the world are working to keep it under control. In the meantime, maybe stay away from raw milk.